Joining us now, Congressman Matt Gates. He's a member of the House Judiciary and Armed Services Committee, and it is great to have you with us. Uh, Congressman, let's start with uh, the oversight and judiciary hearing uh, with uh, Loretta Lynch. I know you can't tell us much, uh, but uh, you have a way of uh, putting things that uh, is uh, illuminating. With that set up, you should, uh, <laughs> you should do great. What well, do you think? Lou, I, I think that it's a total joke that here we are just with days left in the Republican control of the Congress, and just now we're getting to Jim Comey and Loretta Lynch. Sometimes in Washington, the game you're watching is not actually the game that's being played. And right now, the game that's actually being played is one of keep away. They're trying to keep Rod Rosenstein away from our questioning while we still have the power to get answers. And the reason is because if we had Rosenstein before us instead of Loretta Lynch and Jim Comey, we would ask him which members of the cabinet he was conspiring with to remove the president of the United States. Who was he talking uh, with about potentially wearing a wire on the president? Yeah. I want to know the answer to that. Can you believe, Lou, that it has been months since we learned that from the lawyer of the FBI, and yet we still haven't asked Rosenstein those questions under oath? You know, at this point, Congressman, I've got to be straightforward with you as you, uh, uh, as you are with me. Uh, you know, I, I am not surprised that this is, uh, we've watched the clock get run out by the Dems successfully because the leadership of the House of Representatives is in the pocket of I don't know who, but in the pockets of so many, and I have to believe they have uh, at least offices near K Street. Uh, this speaker of yours has been a total joke, and you guys put up with him and even let him resign and then keep his job for eight months. I, I don't know what to say. I, I fear sometimes that you know, we did not have the support we really needed to execute oh. on our oversight over the FBI and Department of Justice. So now what's going to happen, Lou, is that the Democrats are going to get control and they're going to show us what real robust oversight looks like. They are going to use every tool in the toolbox to try to disrupt this president from executing on border security or spending cuts or any of the reforms that we need in this government. And so, you know, it, it, it's, it's so hard to kind of tolerate this environment in which we, like, what we're fed, like, Jim Comey, bite by bite, and Loretta Lynch, when Devin Nunes gave us a list of 42 names months ago. And we never really took that seriously. Right. And so I, I think that in the new Congress, we're going to have to use different tools in the minority to make sure that we give this president the defense that he deserves, because these are phony charges. And if we continue to just kind of play the Washington game of politeness and allow the, the FBI and Department of Justice to slow roll their responses to our questions, then we never really get the truth for the American people. And that's one reason people hate Congress so much, because we sometimes confuse motion and progress. There's a whole lot of motion, like yeah. today with Loretta Lynch, but not nearly enough progress. Well, I think that's well put, and I think uh, the American people, by the way, really aren't that confused by what they're witnessing in the Congress and the Senate of the United States. Uh, they're watching. Uh, people are getting very little done. You wonder, given all the investigations, uh, hearings, and all of the, uh, the nonsense that's come to absolutely nothing, uh, I'm amazed at the low ratings, the tragically low ratings, uh, approval ratings of Congress and the Senate are as high as they are. I, I mean, it has been a devastating two years for the Republican Party. It has, and now we've got to pivot and use a different set of tools as we move into the minority in the House. And I fear that there's not going to be a real effort to legislate. It's going to be careening from one government spending brink to another. And all the Democrats are going to use their time for is to try to embarrass and distract yeah. the administration from the work on trade that you've highlighted on the show, the deregulation agenda, all yeah. the things that have created the fastest wage growth I've, in a decade. I've, I've got a thought. And I, I know that you and Congressman Jordan, Congressman Meadows, yeah. uh, all of you are uh, in the Freedom Caucus working very hard for this president. But remember these words, because I think this president has got a very good sense of what they mean. Uh, and it, they were words uttered by President Obama, you'll recall. With that pen and that phone, he means to move ahead. Uh, he has enormous power that he's about to remind everybody in the Democratic as well as Republican Party uh, he possesses. I, I just think, uh, you know, I don't see why he would wait on anybody in the, uh, on Capitol Hill ever again. To get something done. I, I, the frustration has got to be immense. Uh, you get the final word here, Congressman. 
Well, we've got a spending vote coming up, Lou, and I'm going to be supporting the amendments of Mark Meadows and Jim Jordan right. to actually get border security and wall funding into this deal. The fact that we would wave the white flag of surrender and think that we're going to get a better deal when Nancy Pelosi is speaker is just the type of, 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 uh, of bad energy that I think the Republicans have brought to the border security debate. I think we need yep. to be a lot more aggressive. You're the man to do it. Good, good to have you with us, Congressman Matt Gates.